previously on my extreme bathroom makeover. Severe water damage. Of course there's more things going wrong. Here is a before and after of what we've done so far. Things I never thought would happen. Mr. Entrepreneur CEO Jeffrey Bezos blasting off into space. The 2020 Olympics in 2021. And the most newsworthy of them all. My bathroom makeover part four. That deserves some jazz hands. It's been a long time coming. So if you've been following this journey, you would know that the rest of the bathroom is already nicely made over. It's been a lot of hard work, but it finally paid off and we've been using this bathroom for the past, honestly, I wanna say like around a year at this point. But as you guys know, I just could not convince my parents that a new bathtub would be a worthy investment. For some reason, they were fine with having this yellow bathtub with the rest of the bathroom, but I was not. I wish we would have just replaced the bathtub. Part four. Or we could have painted the bathtub. Part, part four. Subscribe for part four. So my plan was to pester them every day for about four months until they got so annoyed that they finally caved in, which personally is my favorite tactic because it worked. So this video is brought to you by my parents being too annoyed of me. You're welcome. <laughs> This is what we're working with. A mustard yellow tub, yellow wing tiles, and frosted sliding glass doors. Now, the rest of the bathroom is renovated, so obviously this bathtub just doesn't fit with the vibe anymore. I want to replace it with a shiny new white modern looking tub. Just something that will look a lot cleaner, obviously. And I also want to get some new tiles up in there. And of course, some matching shower fixtures. So of course, I thought about doing this part of the renovation myself because obviously I've been doing everything else but then I thought is my ego really worth the, the water damage so for the first time in generation DIY history I am hiring a contractor everybody say hello to Artem Hi, Arlo. So honestly, I had a very good time just sitting back for once, not having to do the manual labor. So the first step was taking apart the shower door and the demolition process, which I honestly think is such a fun time, just hammering away at walls and having an outlet for inner frustration. Okay, so demolition has been happening all morning and still I am not rid of this ugly yellow tub, but it's happening next, I believe. He has just gone out to go buy the new bathtub. We still don't know if there's like water damage yet. I asked and he's like, we won't be really sure until we take the tub out. So I'm really hoping that we're okay. I'm pretty sure this tub is from when this house was built, like back in the 70s. And <laughs> let's hope for the best. And then it was time to say a long overdue farewell and RIP to the yellow bathtub. <laughs> yeah, it will not be missed by me anyway. I don't know about my parents. that, they could finally install the new bathtub. Listen, I never want to disrespect the X, but this new version is really such an upgrade, and I think we're gonna have a lot of good moments together. I also wanted to add a niche to the wall because we didn't have that in the previous setup, and it's really just a lot more convenient to have a shelf up high to put stuff in so the bathtub doesn't get as dirty. It was really interesting actually to see the process in action because I've watched like 50 videos about this because I was at one point prepared to like do this part myself. All the boards are actually waterproof and the blue parts are like waterproofing membrane, which is cool. I think it's cool at least. So while they were finishing that up, it was time for me to pick out some tiles. I really wanted to go for something white bright, obviously, to match with the aesthetic. And I have been really drawn to like this subway tile look. I think it's so cool. To me, it's like a good mix of simplistic, but also it's got a little bit of texture and pattern and it draws your eye in. However, we had some pushback from my parents. Specifically, my mom mentioned that because the tiles are kind of like on the smaller side, it would be harder 
to clean just because there's a bunch of grooves with grout just like the surface area of the tiles was smaller so instead i decided to go for a larger format marble ish tile well not ish it is marble <laughs> i mean not real marble it's like what like not real marble you know actually what is it made of oh it might be ceramic actually and for the niche i really liked this hexagonal white kind of a little bit stone looking tile i thought it'd be a good contrast slash compliment to the marble tiles so they just installed all the tiles with mortar which is essentially this like concrete slash cement mixture and then after that they filled in the grooves with grout it was just finishing touches with painting and adding the shower fixtures. The rest of the metal in the bathroom is the champagne bronze color. Luckily, I found a pretty good match on Wayfair. But then, I knew my color matching luck was gonna run out eventually. And I also think that my specifications for the shower door were a little too specific. We needed the exact right color, exactly champagne bronze, which is very hard to come across. We also needed frosted glass, which is also really hard to find. Put that together, you got a pretty rare breed. So I searched high and low for the perfect shower door to no avail. Yep, to zero avail. Unless I wanted to spend like $3,000 on a custom shower door, <laughs> but I wasn't gonna do that, right? I mean, right? <laughs> Well, so I contacted like five different glass companies in my city to make me a custom shower door and I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm not pretty enough. Maybe I don't show enough affection or maybe my breath just smells terrible in the morning, but none of them emailed me back. So yeah, so I, to be honest, I did feel a little bit rejected five different like five like all five of them so at this point we had actually been using a temporary like shower curtain for the time being while i was looking for a shower door because it was taking at this point it had been like a month honestly <laughs> i won't go into it but there were a lot of hiccups like <laughs> constant hiccups. So my mom had actually mentioned that using a shower curtain was a lot easier to clean and also just like easier to use in general. And I just took that as yet another sign to scrap the whole shower door idea. So instead I decided to go back to a DIY approach with a shower curtain. Hi guys, I am outside. <gasps> Jennifer's outside? Time to riot. Anyway, so I am about to spray paint the shower curtain rod because it is pretty much impossible to find the exact color that I've chosen for the bathroom. Honestly, I kind of kicked myself in the foot. Kick myself? Wait, can you kick yourself in the f I guess you technically can. I believe the saying is to actually shoot yourself in the foot, but we're not trying to be violent here. Anyway, I have to like custom make a bunch of stuff and I'm not too sure if the spray paint is gonna hold up in the bathroom, but I guess we'll see. The color that I used originally for the light fixture in the bathroom, it doesn't like sell anymore or I just can't find it anywhere. So I decided to mix two colors and hopefully it'll create the same-ish color. So I've got like a rose gold here and satin bronze. And then I'm also going to spray everything with a top coat and hopefully that keeps everything intact. We'll see how it goes. First of all, I'm gonna sand everything down with a little bit of sandpaper just so the spray paint actually sticks. Once everything is sanded down, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray everything. <laughs> So I just did a first coat. Oh, where did I put it? Oh no, the rod is all the way over here. Stay. Honestly, 
The color match is pretty good. So I'm gonna just stick with that one color. This is good for me because now I don't have to do multiple coats of different colors and this just makes my life a lot easier. And I haven't been taking too many W's these days. So I really needed this win. Let's keep going. Hi guys, so I'm next to my sewing machine. That's really dusty. And I've got my butt fly clips in. Not the butt flies. Anyway, so I've been staring at this shower curtain for a long time and I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with it because I, I know I want to like make it fancier and look cooler, but I wasn't sure how. I bought this fringe that I was gonna add to the bottom. I don't think it's enough. It's also a little bit long. Obviously it's like personal preference how long a shower curtain is. I do want a little bit of the bottom of the bathtub to be showing. It's like showing the ankle, you know, a little scandalous. So I decided to like hike up the length of it. At first I was just gonna like take off some of the bottom, but now I think I wanna add some sort of pattern. I wanna make a couple sections of stripes. So I'm gonna hem a couple stripes. I, I really don't know how to explain this. I also haven't sewn in probably over a year. So let's see if I, I still have the chops. So I'm just loading up my machine. I'm also currently in the middle of rewatching all of the Marvel movies. This is like a yearly occurrence at this point. I miss everyone so much. I miss Iron Man. I miss Cap. I miss America's ass. I really do. And so last night I cried to Infinity War. Yes, I did. I did. I was having this discussion with you guys on Instagram, but you guys let me know what your favorite Marvel character is because I think the Hulk is severely underrated. I would do anything for Mark Ruffalo. That man needs to be protected. That is the fact of the matter. So I just folded up the curtain to have a horizontal fold and sewed along the line that was already on the waffle pattern on the fabric, which just made it super convenient for me. I spaced out the folds five lines apart and did three folds per group to have this like ruffle pattern and then repeated that around 40 lines down and repeated that again. I wanted to add some fringe to the bottom to add some length back and also add a little character and hopefully some weight. So I just zigzag stitched that to the bottom. Hi guys! Okay, we are nearing the home run. Nope, home stretch. Got my metaphors mixed up. So anyway, I have the spray painted broad right here. I think it actually looks so good. I did a couple coats of that top clear coat, so hopefully nothing scratches off. I think it's looking pretty solid right now. There are some weird little dinks, hinky dinkies. I don't know what they're called. I think I'm just gonna turn those to the top so that you can't see them. But I also have these rings all spray painted too. I think they also look really good, so I'm gonna put them up right now and then I'll show you the curtain. <gasps> Wait, I think that looks so good actually. I can't tell if that's straight, so there's actually a leveling app. 
Oh, it looks like it's level actually. Wait, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna put on the curtain now. Do I put on the rings first or? Yeah, okay. <laughs> No. What? I made it too short. I'll show you guys how short I made it. It's so short. It's so short. Uh. Okay, so I kind of overshot it <laughs> by a lot. I thought that the fringe would make it like a lot longer for some reason. So here's what I could do. I can lower the bar, but never lower your standards. What am I trying to say? So some options I can do. I can lower the bar. Sounds like what I do when I'm dating. And I can also take out one of these ruffles, maybe like one from each. I do really like the three ruffles though. I think it looks really good, but I'm just gonna lower it a little bit to see if that is good enough. I do, I do really like this height though, but what can you do? Okay, honestly, it's still a little bit shorter than I would like, but right now it's just long enough for it to be practical. I think I'm gonna add a liner inside though, eventually, or pretty soon, because this is definitely gonna have to be on the outside because I, the fringe is definitely not waterproof and it's just not long enough. I'm gonna get some third-party input. Ma? Ba? Anyone? I need your opinion. Okay, so I kind of made this a little too short, but do you think it's like, okay? Like, I think we should add a waterproof one on the inside, but like, what about the outside? Lower I already did lower it, but I think any lower would not look good anymore. I could take out multiple, but I kind of like this pattern is the thing. So should I take out the middle one or one of the bottom? Yeah, that one yeah, but I don't need it to be like at the bottom bottom, like just a little bit longer. Well, we're gonna put one on the inside. Oh, Yeah, this is for the outside. Like this is not that waterproof. We're gonna put like a waterproof one on the inside. So should I still make it longer? No. Like does it look fine? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it is a little short. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to tear out the top one of every other ruffle pattern. So that'll add like six centimeters to the bottom, which hopefully should be enough. All right, guys. I think we got it. I took out every other top row and this is what it looks like. I actually think it looks really good now. It's actually a really good length, but again, I'm gonna add an inner liner just for waterproofing and all that kind of stuff. The bar honestly matches the color of the shower fixtures so well and it looks decently like metal. It's still, I mean, if you don't like look at it too carefully, it looks pretty good, I think. Ah! Everything's coming together. The next step is I actually am going to make a little seat stool thing. I actually love building furniture, so this will be actually really fun. bathtub area of the bathroom was actually finished but I wanted to add one final touch just to elevate the vibe of the bathroom even more so I wanted to add this motion detected LED strip light to the bottom of the sink cabinet area I saw someone on TikTok do this and I knew I had to try it out and I just think it gives such a luxurious feel to the bathroom which I love and of course I'll link this below so that you guys can try because I'm truly obsessed with it I think just like such a little thing just Mwah, adds the chef's kiss. But after that, the entire bathroom was finally finished. Ah! 
hello? Let's see some final before and afters. my dream bathroom. I honestly never thought that we would see this day that I would finish this series, but although there was there was a lot of pain and suffering, I think it all worked out in the end and I learned a lot. And a lot of things didn't go to plan like the shower door, but I still really like how it turned out. So let me know what your favorite part of the transformation was out of all four parts. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Also, you can follow me on Instagram if you if you so choose to. I also have new music coming out. All my music is under Gen Z if you wanna check that out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.